show. We're just talking about a couple of movies that are coming out. There's an article in the Daily Beast on Adam Sandler, and the headline, I think, is something along the lines of, yes, Adam Sandler may win an Academy Award this year. Now, it's not for any Sandler movie that I'm in, but this is another movie. I think it's called Uncut Gems, and uh, it's, it's more of a serious role. It's not, you know, written, directed, produced by Adam Sandler, but he's got a chance for uh, – he's getting a lot of Oscar buzz. Could you imagine if Sandler won an Academy Award? Oh, my gosh, dude, what? I mean, Matthew McConaughey won an Academy Award, so that was probably considered a big upset. But, he, you know, the role he played – yeah, you know, it was was brilliant. Like this would be considered like a crossover role or something. You know what I mean? Like Sam because he's just known for making goofy funny movies. Yes. That then I, what well, a remarkable upset that would be. What is the biggest upset by an actor in an Academy Award uh, you know in the history? Yeah, Paul. You know, Sandler did Punch Drunk Love and got a lot of buzz around there and he's had other movies yeah. where he's gotten that for, but if you told me Robin Williams would be almost better as a serious actor than a comedian cuz Robin Williams had some serious roles that were some of his highlights. He yeah, got, yeah. Got I, awards. And I always liked him in those roles yeah. than in the other ones. I, I just thought that that was better. I was like, like Sandler's movie, Funny People. Yes. That's one of my favorites. I watched it a dozen times, and he's more like Seth he's, Rogen. He's dark in there. Yeah. But Sandman is, you know, when we were shooting the movie up on the Cape, and he said, you know, Danny, this movie's getting good buzz. He wasn't talking about the movie that we were doing. He was talking about this uncut gems. I think Kevin Garnett is in that movie, and he said Kevin was really good, really good, and and I guess he's the a, a, a diamond district jeweler to the stars, and then something happens. But we've seen at least a little bit of this with Sandler, Punch Drunk Love, you know, Funny People, Love Rain or Me. Uh, so Sandler's had a couple of these uh, turns there. Yes, Fritzy. We were talking about Oscar upsets. We've mentioned it before. Is that a big upset? Michael Caine, Cider House Rules, taking down Haley Joel Osment, Sixth Sense? Uh, yeah, but, I mean, Michael Caine's a great actor. That movie, Cider House Rules or whatever it is, you know, Haley Joel Osment didn't win because of his age. Yeah, I really believe that. Because he was, he was unbelievable in that movie. Yeah, point. Woody, the bartender for Cheers, has been nominated twice. Once for Best Actor <laughs> and Best Supporting Actor. No one called that. No, no, they didn't. No. Also, there's um, Zach Galifianakis has the movie Between Two Ferns. I can't get through the trailer. It's, and I mean that in a great way. <laughs> I, it's just Zach Galifianakis in, in uh, the movie. He, if you have watched those episodes of Between Two Ferns, they are just... Uh, like, laugh out loud funny. I love him. And in the trailer, uh, Matthew McConaughey drowns. They, I think they, they kill him or nearly kill him in doing an interview with Matthew McConaughey. And Will Ferrell, I know, is involved in this. There are all kinds of celebrities involved in Between Two Ferns. But watch the series before you watch the movie. Just watch Brad Pitt. Just because <laughs> he's, he's brutal. They spell his name wrong in the graphic. Like Bradley Pitts or something like that. Uh, and then Rambo. I love Rambo. This Rambo, I'm worried about. I, I Grandpa Rambo. I'm I'm not as keen on this. At some point, Sylvester Sylvester Stallone has to get back to uh, making Cobra. That was a good movie. Ooh. That Cobra dude is awesome. And at some point, it's going to be in the line of all of his remakes that he's doing right now. Yeah, Pauline. Does anyone know or think they know what the plot line is for Rambo Last Blood? <laughs> you know, this he's, time it's personal. I I don't know. It doesn't. Who cares what the plot line is? He's got a daughter. I got that. Did somebody come for his daughter? Uh -oh. Is he a grandfather who gets into it with some uh, guys at the drop-off line at school for the grandkids <laughs> and busts out an AK? And his voice, like he, he's losing his voice there. It's, According it, to the, the description, Rambo must confront his past and unearth his ruthless combat skills to exact revenge in a final mission. Well, wait, why is he confronting his past? I, what is there to confront? <laughs> like he's, he's finally confronting his past? So he's at the Starbucks and runs up at a couple guys from Vietnam, and they're like, hey, that's the guy who messed us up like 30 years ago. i got to confront my past. <laughs> <laughs> like he says it aloud? Like he's looking in the mirror. <laughs> They see. Oh, got a, he's got his shirt off, and he's got, you know, that uh, headband. Socks and sandals. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got camo on.
They say I gotta confront my past. And he says in the middle of the jungle, my ring's outside. It's just kind of strange. <laughs> what does that even mean? For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on VR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.